look him up and down. So he's got a bruise, a big shiner in his eye. Got the scar. Occasion Occasional fights do that, sure. That's a big fight. It was roughed up. Probably resisted the rest, makes him a hot head. A fancier scarf, downtown fashion, cushy, cushy job, office clerk. And a tattoo. Prison tats. Good. Tell me your account of what happened. Come on, in, Shai. I left my work, and I hurried up to see the fireworks in Whitechapel. I was late, so I decided to cut through off Moon Street. I saw the first fireworks light up in the sky. I bumped into a constable on a corner before entering Half Moon. And then suddenly, what with all the firework flare, I saw two men. They were both lying flat in the middle of the street. I stopped where I was. I thought about turning back to the police, but as I was thinking of that, I saw a fur person. He was leaning over the body that was furthest from me. The second I saw him, he raised his head and he stared at me. In a flash, I saw his gun, but he made a dash for it instead and he escaped through Whitechapel Street. Hmm. Now that giant picture window your folks have in the living room, the one that looks into the backyard, the one that's basically the entire back wall of the room. Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. So you might still have had time to return to the constable. I panicked. I, I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I, I approached the bodies just Ooh. to see if they were still alive. I oh, saw yeah. the one had blood pumping out of his stomach. He was dying. It was horrible. Second one was already dead. He had a hole in his head. He was holding a gun in his hand, though. I took it, and then I followed the third man. So what's done that then? The house has shifted due to the sudden snow and the window commits. Oh God! Wow! So the weight of the snow has done that. Ooh! Yikes! Did they hear it happen? Or uh, did they just wake up this morning and see that there's a big crack in it? Ah, that sucks. Oh dear. Interesting. Pray morning continue. surprise. Mm. I turned a corner, and I saw the man standing in the middle of the street. He seemed to be in some some sort of panic. And then, Mister Holmes, something strange happened. I told the police, and they laughed at what I said. But I swear to you, my words are true. I started running towards him, but then I was blinded by a flash. It was so bright that I hardly saw anything for a good dozen seconds, but I kept running forward. As I arrived in Whitechapel, I heard a woman screaming, and then I was caught by the police. But there wasn't a trace of that man. Of course, then they found a gun and all that blood. I couldn't see the murderer escaping and all that mess. Perhaps I was still half-blinded at that moment. A thrilling account, my young man. Hmm. 5k window, though. Ah. Yeah. Layton, are you able to describe the person whom you saw standing in Half Moon Street? Well, I wasn't able to see his face at all. It was too dark. And he was too far away. I could see his silhouette. Hmm. And what about that? Nothing so special. He, he was wearing a jacket. He was quite average in, in size and his weight. I see. Was there anything else that struck you at the time? No. But perhaps... It's strange, but... I can't remember the sound of his footsteps as he was running away. Perhaps it was because of the fireworks, or, or the surprise of me seeing him. We shall see you soon, young man. Yeah, you see, I always thought that Act of God meant things like disasters, like a flood, or um, earthquakes, that kind of thing. Uh, whereas, 
just damage caused by weather, like heavy rain, that kind of stuff. It, I guess it depends on the, the policy, because not every policy is going to cover that either. But if you've got well, like a very comprehensive one, I mean, I know here in England, my house insurance, well, it's only contents, because the building itself is the landlord's responsibility. So if he has to have that by law... Um, but if, if it were my house, I could get house insurance that covers structural damage due to weather anomalies and the like. Whether your parents have got that, I hope they do. So yeah, hopefully they are covered, because that's a chunk of change to have to lose. Alright, let's go inspect the street. So what have we been told so far? Leighton's statement... He's lootless, so he had nothing of any value in his pockets when he was caught by the police directly after the crime, running away from the scene as well, without having robbed the men that were killed. That doesn't actually come together. He was holding a revolver with two fired cartridges. One for each man. But none of that all adds up yet. Hmm. All right, then. Here we are. What do we have? So we'll walk around first without detective vision on. We're probably going to need it, actually, aren't we? This is gloomy. Dark alleyway at night in a bad part of town. What could go wrong? Well, there's a copper here, so we're all right. Uh, please, gentlemen, leave the scene now. Oh, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes? Is that you? Uh, good evening, uh, Constable... Constable Marrow. I was here with Inspector Abiline during the Ripper case, Mr. Holmes, back in 88. But then this is nothing like that case. With this one, we've got the murderer, the weapon, and the statements, which speak for themselves. Of course, Mara. But you know that appearances can sometimes be deceiving. Who were the victims? The two men here, both shot. The stat fellow was Brian Vercotti, a well-known ruffian. The other, Kenneth Butler, a jeweller by trade. A ruffian and a jeweller. Hmm. Uh, you spoke of statements. You have witnesses? Well, I was there, so I gave my own statement. And then there were two other witnesses who said they saw the killer Chapman. Mr. Turner, a gentleman who lives in that flat over there. And Polly Powell, a flower seller, who is over at the far side of the street. So, Constable Marrow, I should be delighted to hear your testimony. I was standing at the north side of Half Moon Street. That was the side that you came from. But you would have been unable to observe this part of the street, where we are standing now. That is correct. But I saw the two victims slowly enter Half Moon Street, and then shortly after, the fireworks started. A few minutes after that, the fellow Chapman rushed towards me and ran into Half Moon Street. Mm, please continue. I didn't pay attention, but suddenly I heard a woman's cries and police whistles on the other side of Half Moon Street. I rushed over there and I saw the two dead bodies on the ground. When I reached Whitechapel Street, I saw Leighton Chapman... He'd been caught by two police constables. So you really just didn't see anything at all. <laughs> That's the testimony you entered. Uh-huh. Did you hear the shots? I didn't hear any shots. The fireworks were all over the sky. They were so loud I couldn't hear anything else. Now, what were the fireworks in honour of, uh, Constable? Well... Today is Queen Victoria's birthday, Mr. Holmes. Ah, uh, yes, I appear to have lost track of the days. It is May now, of course. <laughs> Holmes doesn't give a shit about things like that. That's just extraneous knowledge that gets cast to one side by him. 
Uh, Constable Marrow, what else caught your attention while you were running through Half Moon Street? I saw nothing but rats, and I took the time to light every corner with my lamp. Did you happen to look up at Mr. Turner's window when you were on Half Moon Street at that time? Yes, I saw that the window was open, but no one was there. It was dark in the room. Constable, your statements have been of great value to me. Hmm. Yeah, I can imagine that this is not good timing, is it, really? <laughs> I can imagine they would be upset about that. I think I just heard a van door close. Every time I hear a thump from outside now, I think, that's my delivery. It's here. Let's just hold for a second. No, now I hear an engine starting up. The bullet struck his head. This man didn't stand a chance. So unless the delivery driver has got it all wrong, <laughs> that's just a neighbour leaving. What have we got? Left pocket. Here's a key. This is an ordinary key. I wonder what kind of door it opens. What is this? This looks like something. All oh, right. Okay. I need to go into detective vision. A piece of wood that has stuck between the cobblestones. That looks like wood. Let us take a closer look. Oh, right. Yeah, the other piece. That looks like part of a walking stick, like the bottom end of it. Maybe. Mm. Hmm. This shard of wood is quite new. He tried to stop the bleeding with his hand. Death was not instant. Would have been painful as well. well. I mean, any gunshot wound would be, but a stomach wound is supposed to be one of the most painful. The bullet penetrated his stomach. A dreadful wound. Another tattoo from prison? A tattoo from Westgate Prison. Vercotti must have done some time there. Well, if it was a ruffian... Brian Vercotti and Leighton Chapman both have identical Westgate prison tattoos. They were most likely acquainted. Mm-hmm. Anything on the shoes? No. The head? Brian Vercotti suffered greatly. What a terrible way to die. Yeah. There's nothing in the immediate area. Alright, so supposedly a guy up there saw this happening. Interesting about the barrels. Good evening, Mr. Turner. Oh, I, I heard Constable Marrow reply to you as Mr. Holmes. Are you that detective, gentlemen? I've heard of you. Uh, and well, I know things. Things about this evening. Excellent. Might we hear your story? Let us have a look at you. Well, now, somebody's got a medal and enjoys wearing it. Crimean War Veteran. There's a weak leg limping. A 
walking stick. Missing button, poor life. Mm hmm. Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Uh, I was already in bed when the fireworks started. A few moments after, I clearly heard two gunshots from outside. Please continue. I, I quickly got up and I grabbed the lamp from my nightstand and I rushed towards the window. I looked down and I saw two bodies. And there was a man with a gun who was standing nearby. Where exactly? Well, near this body. Did he notice you? I don't think so. He rushed towards Whitechapel Street without looking around. Mr. Turner, did you see anyone else in the street? No, I saw no one but that man, the murderer, the fellow they caught. Mm, he said as he looked away. Were the two shots you heard consecutive? Yes, th there was a very short pause between them, and, and, and they sounded different somehow. It seemed to me that the second shot was louder than the first. That is an interesting comment. As a military man, he would know that kind of stuff and notice it. Mr. Turner, what were your actions after you stepped up to the window? I was afraid that the man with a gun might return, so I stayed close to the window till I saw the policeman coming in the half moon from Whitechapel. Then I walked out to tell them everything I saw. You have helped us a great deal, Mr. Turner. Hmm. Now then, young Wiggins, what are you doing here? Mr. Holmes, did you see my brother at Scotland Yard? Is he all right? Well, he's under arrest. So maybe not. I think he's had better days, we should say. Nothing around here. So apparently someone over here, the flower seller, should also... Oh, hello. Hello, handsome. Yeah. Also, that should be a good view for the flower seller. Actually, that doesn't give her a reflection. That gives her a reflection of this corner. But... When Wiggins' brother said he ran down here, he said he caught a flash of light that dazed him. That mirror was positioned like that. The flash could have been from something that was reflected. But that would have had to have been done from here. Hmm. All right. Mrs. Polly Powell? Powell. What do you want? Uh, my name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the crime that took place this evening. Well, I've already gave my testimony, but very well. Well, you shall give it a game then, shan't you? Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Yes, yes. I was selling my flowers as usual, and then the fireworks began, in honour of Queen Victoria. I enjoyed those. But then, all of a sudden, a young lad ran out of Half Moon Street and stopped just by me. He had a gun in his hand. He was like a ghost, and all covered in blood. It was dark. But I could see him, because of the flashes from the fireworks. And then? I screamed as loud as I could. I knew that a policeman should be on duty in the vicinity. He had no time to escape. Two constables got him. Then another constable came out from the very same street, and I heard him talking of a horrible murder. Mrs Powell, did you hear the gunshots? I'm not sure. You know... What with the fireworks? That is actually interesting as well, because the military man says he heard gunshots. And the others didn't because of the fireworks. Did you see anyone else leaving Half Moon Street? 
prior to or at the time of the crime? No, sir, I did not. Even with all the fireworks, I was very attentive, as I'm always on the lookout for customers. My thanks to you, Mrs. Powell. Mm. But she's around this corner here. And the police officer who didn't hear was around the other side of the street where we came from. And this guy had an open window right into the alleyway. One would assume that the gunshots right here would definitely be noticeable over the fireworks, because he's right there. With him being in the military, maybe you could tell the difference between firework and gunshot. That's true as well, yeah. Because apparently gunshots don't sound like you think they do in the real world anyway. You know, an actual gun doesn't sound like it does in the movies. It's been sexed up a little bit in the movies to sound a bit more... I don't know... significant? Whereas really it's more like a hollow pop. Can't talk to this guy. Nope. Oh, that just leads us back out then. Okay. So, the mm. mirror. This mirror is turned towards Half Moon Street. Hmm. A very low resolution mirror, though. Locked. Locked. That's a, yeah, a pop as opposed to a crack. So, I mean, he would be able to distinguish those sounds, right? Also, can we look at these marks in the street? No. Locked. Hmm. Gun Franklin Wholesale Clothing. Again, we can't do anything there. That just leads away. Locked. I get the feeling all the doors are locked. I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. Let's have a look around here in detective vision. Let's see if we can spot anything. Couple of bottles. Locked. This guy have a pink hat. Locked. He has a pink hat. I want that hat. Locked. Hmm. Okay, let us assemble some information. So, latent statement. Doesn't match with terms of a common statement. A common statement. Leighton Chapman is the only person who was seen entering Half Moon Street after Brian Vercotti and Kenneth Butler, but he was seen standing over the dead bodies and escaping the crime scene shortly afterwards. The person whom Leighton uh, Chapman describes in his statements is a figment of his own imagination created to vindicate himself. Is lying basically. Different shots. The common statement. Two victims, different shots. Lootless. Turner's view, Leighton's revolver. Witness testimonies and the crime uh, weapon clearly point to one possible culprit, Leighton Chapman. Looking good for Leighton! But we had different shots and two victims. Uh, Turner's view, dark window, lootless, Leighton's revolver. Turner could hear the contrast between two fired uh, shots as a fact, three shots were made. At first, a single shot was fired, and then two guns fired simultaneously directly afterwards. Possibly. 
which will lead us to no doubt have to test that theory. Turner could hear the contrast between two fired shots. They were made from different points at Half Moon Street. Yeah, because they would echo differently as well. And yeah, Leighton fired two shots from his gun. But he didn't tell us he did that. He has mentioned not at all firing his gun, right? Nor did he say he picked up a weapon that he found lying on the ground. But this one leads to a test, so let's have a look at that. We need to debunk Imaginary Man, maybe? Kenneth Butler and Brian Vercotti were the victims of a double murder carried out by one person. Okay. Turner had a view from the dark window, of course. Mr. Turner stated that he remained at the window of his flat until the police arrived. However, this is in conflict with Marrow's statement, as the constable did not see anyone at the window. But he said the window was dark. Right? He said there was no light on in the window. And, he, and Turner said he went to bed, so there wouldn't be a light on then. None of those come together. There was a possible crossfire between Kenneth Butler and Brian Vercotti at Half Moon Street. Examine the dead bodies and perform a reenactment. Uh, talk to Mr. Turner and check the view from his flat. There should be something to explain the contradictions in statements. I mean, also, the way they've fallen, right? So, Butler would have been facing back the way they came, Vercotti was facing this way. One took a bullet to the head, the other to the stomach. Both of them would have needed to have been shot the way they were facing, and they would have fallen down pretty much instantly. So there would have been a shot from over here, and a shot from over there. Well, they shot at each other, but only one gun was found. A second person with a gun might have been might have grabbed their guns and maybe Leighton grabbed the other one. There's possibilities. You think Lestrade did it? Well, there we go. That's going to save us a lot of trouble if we just arrest Lestrade, you know? It would be my pleasure to assist you with your investigation, Mr. Holmes. Select the gunman. Okay. This means there would be a shot there and there. So they shoot at each other, but then where are their weapons? Hmm. Well, let's do this one again first. I mean, again, one of them might have been the one found on what's-his-face. I am unable to see any higher. I need to find something to lift my lamp. Wiggins, stand on my shoulders. Mr. Holmes, did you see my brother at Scotland Yard? I need to find something right? to lift the lamp. See whether or not there was a bullet hole there. Something to lift the lamp. Well, there we go. This should be useful. In true adventure game fashion, we rub items together until they create new items. Oh. No, that's not a bullet hole.
Nothing interesting here. Apparently Holmes doesn't think so. So that's not likely the one that fired the first gun. That's the two shots. This guy probably fired two shots. We've got one bullet hole, means another one had to be uh, somewhere else. Aha! This is most definitely a bullet hole. The brick cracks are fresh. Watson, there was a third shot fired in this street. Mm-hmm. Two shots at the same time, and one on its own. Third shot, two victims. Suddenly becomes a new potential. It's either crossfire or double murder, but it's crossfire. Both died of crossfire, with each of them holding a gun. One of the guns is now missing. So somebody made off with one of the guns. So somebody made off with... Um, I don't remember which order they're in. Let's have a look. Uh, let's see. Whose gun? Yeah, that's Vercotti. So somebody made off with Butler's gun. 